Good morning, folks. We're starting in the North Pacific, where we now have two volcanic events in progress, and the earthquakes are starting to rise into the moderate range. We'll talk more about earthquakes at the end, and also break down space weather, but we'll quickly note that we've had two days of weak flaring, a calming solar wind, and a weak or sparse CMEs. The Uyen system suggests we'll stagnate stormwise. The Indian Ocean system completely lost its power. They're no longer watching the southernmost storm in the Pacific, but both West Pacific equatorial storms have gained cyclone status right in the middle of the road. Note that the Solomon Islands took a minor tremor as the southern storm formed and were eyeing the Philippines and Mariana for shaking in the coming days. Slightly south, one storm heads for Australia's northeast, rain dropping on New Zealand, and the Indian Ocean remnants are to the west. Meanwhile, today the major player is the convergence of moisture across central Australia. In Europe and the UK, we are eyeing that large North Atlantic low-pressure cell. She's got one convergence line, and I don't think anyone needs me to point it out here, do we? Didn't think so. Top watch in the U.S. barely changes. A low in the Gulf states is going to cause significant storming yet again. Please keep watch. Also note heavy snowfall potential to the border north. Okay, let's come to the sun. As you can see, we've had only mid-sea flares. Solar wind indeed calmed continuously to ambient levels now, and the filaments that erupted at the Lemon backside made only minor CMEs visible. Now let's take a look at the sunspots. As with yesterday, we spy some development. It's just taking its sweet old time. The baby group in the lead between northern and southern spots will mix, but likely not pop until she hits the limb. We also still have the potential for positive and negative mixing where the colors are close together at the backside of those northern regions. No major flares expected today. The real story we're dealing with now is the earthquake watch set to ramp back up. After the Chile quake, our condition index fell to C plus or B minus. Last night we began the ramp upward in factors after a few days of almost no earthquakes. Dark coronal holes set to face Earth this week, while a tilt of NASA's JPL orbital diagram for the solar system shows that we have a geocentric opposition of Mars and the Sun beginning tomorrow. We're combining our top two earthquake factors, and within the most important, the coronal hole. We have blue coronal fields shrinking to allow unrestricted magnetic force to escape both openings, and as of right now, they still read as having tremendous power. These can lose power in an hour's time, so you gotta keep watch, but as of now, we're about 24 hours away from another earthquake warning. Last note, folks, the Mobile Observatory Project Kickstarter is almost over. Every Canadian observer had the same question, and now we can say yes. You guys hit the mark for us to afford extra gas and lodging, so the Mobile Observatory Project will cover the United States and Canada in its first year. Less than 48 hours left to get your name on the RV. We appreciate all your support. And the survey email asking what name you want on the RV will be coming in just a few days, so watch for that. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.